working out of a 100-year-old refurbished barn, bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. Well, today here in the shop, we are going to be making a special tool for the 1926 Oakland. Uh, we have to make an oil pump prime tool. Say that four times real fast. We need to make an oil pump prime tool for this engine. We are real close to putting on the oil pan. If you watched the last episode, we got the screens in the pan and it's ready. We just ran out of time. So uh, before dad gets here uh, later this week, I want to get this oil pump prime tool done. I have several of them that I've made over the years for different engines, but I don't have one for this particular application. Uh, it's going to be a little extra long to reach down deep into that oil pan through that six cylinder, and uh, it's got a little different design than most modern oil pumps. So this will be a fun little project. A lot of things I'll share with you along the way in this. So, um, well, let's just get into it and get it done. By the way, my name is Mike, and this is Mike R's shop. So we picked up a piece of bar stock, quite long, we'll probably shorten that up, and we need to make an end to go on it that's similar to this distributor end. So it will have a pipe and a roll pin. Uh, I thought about grinding a flat on the end of the bar stock, but I'm concerned about the potential of breaking the ears off on the oil pump. So we don't wanna do that. Um, so we will see about getting something uh, approximately that diameter uh, with a roll pin across that we can get down into uh, there and put on the end of this so that we can hook a drill motor up to pump or prime the oil pump. So we're trying to duplicate this end as I said and I found this bushing from something or another thing or something that is pretty close to the diameter there. So I got to measure the ID and make sure because that's what's most important, not the OD. But I think uh, it's going to be close. If you look here at that ID, and you look at the ID of this, I think it's going to work. So we'll get out our handy dandy dial caliper here. And we can keep pushing the off button all we want, but it's not going to come on. So this has an ID of about 0.56. And this has an ID of about 0.48. So that should work well. It's actually about five, uh, 50 thousandths bigger, which I'm glad because I think it'll be good for this to have a little play. And then the next thing that I was trying to decide was how to make a bushing that goes from this to this because when you put this in here, got a lot of play in there. And I've determined that this nut is probably about right to press down in here. I think with a little tap, just a little, just a little love, it'll go. And then we'll be able to either turn this down with a die to thread it or drill that bigger to slip this in. I'm leaning towards that. We'll probably use two nuts so we get some good penetration. Uh, and then we'll think about maybe welding that up. I'm not sure, but uh, that's what I'm thinking at this point. I haven't thought this through. I haven't looked for anything. I bought this rod. I'm just working this out as we go so that I can share the discovery process with you as we go along. So with careful deliberation, I first of all, I found a pair of nuts because it's best to have two nuts. Um, I found, or I decided I'm going to go ahead and drill these out. Um, so I need to find a drill bit that is about the size of this shaft, which is 371. I don't remember what they advertised. 3 eighths of an inch, okay, that makes sense. So 375, 3 eighths of an inch. 
Uh, so I need to see if I have a 3 8 inch drill bit so that I can get a clearance fit on this uh, to put these on here. So hopefully we have enough. Oh yeah, we have plenty. Should be good. There's other ways we could do this. I could find another sleeve, but I think drilling these nuts out, I've already got one in the vise, so we'll go find a drill bit and then... <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't charge the batteries for my cordless. We'll see if we can get it done. Uh, when you're drilling, can't emphasize enough, you have a spray can that has some lube in it. Be sure that you use lots of lube so that uh, you keep things cool because heat is your enemy when it comes to drilling. One down. That's probably going to be warm, so uh, we'll do the right thing and put it in our bare hand and jump around with it a little bit. Let's see if it fits our shaft. It does very nicely. Needs a little dress up work, but we'll do one more. You know, again, we're using basic tools. I don't have a lathe, I don't have a mill. Uh, so we're just using what we have. It's amazing the amount of tools you can end up making. And really, we're sharing how to make one for a 26 Oakland, but the principles are going to apply to any oil pump, uh, bleep, 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 any oil pump priming tool that you want to make. Obviously, you have to look at your design. I'll show you one that I made for a Mopar if I can find it. Um, probably have one around here for a Chevrolet also. Might need to sharpen the drill bit, but I think we're going to get through it all right. Yep, we're through. And these were only grade 5 nuts. Uh, grade 8 nuts would have been a lot harder and a lot more difficult to get through, but for this tool, it's going to be fine. Okay, so we need to uh, make a determination on the next steps here. We may need to take a rat tail file and work this, but I noticed that this is, uh, this must be cold rolled steel because I feel a lot of burr right here. Bad pun, sorry. So I need to take that over to the grinder and I want to just grind a little taper on it with the bench grinder um, just to uh, make it so it's easier for this to slip on and off of there. Let's determine if these nuts will go very nicely. Yes, they do. Very good. So that's a start. And then, of course, the next thing is going to be determining how much insertion we want. I'm thinking, uh, let's check the depth on this just to be sure. Zeroed out. About a half inch which is what I was thinking we might want, is about a half an inch. So that means that I'll make a mark on this sleeve just to give me a ballpark of about a half an inch. And then I'll know about where I want my inner part to be and I'll know where to put the upper nut, which is probably going to be about right there. Um, that should work well. So we said about a half inch. And I'll just put a scribe mark on it at about half inch. We're not building rocket science here, so we don't need to be getting too carried away. Good enough. Okay, let's go back over to our shaft. Good. So the next bit, we've got to make some decisions on how we're going to do this. I've got plenty of extra shaft, and I think I know what I want to do. I think... Well, let's just show you. Let's, let's just surprise you with what I'm going to do. The other nice thing about this project is it does give me an opportunity to practice a little more with the TIG welder because I haven't used it for a while again. Uh, 
So yeah, we'll uh, gotta adjust our helmet and so forth, but we'll uh, see how she goes. Again, we're only trying to do a spot just to get it spotted down in there. We'll get a pair of pliers and check that and make sure it's spotted well. We may do a couple more tacks on it as well. Particularly on this end, we're going to be um, welding it solid on this sleeve. So I don't want a whole lot of weld on there at this point. But uh, nice thing about welding thicker material, <laughs> uh, less, really no chance of me burning through, which is great because when you're doing thin sheet metal, it's it's always a possibility there. Let me make sure that our nut's in a good spot. According to our little half inch mark. Yep, we're perfect. Maybe a little high, but that's okay. Uh, I think the, the nut slid back just a little bit, but no big deal. We can always just go around that with the MIG welder if we have to. Not pretty, still a lot of practice, but definitely functional. Nice deep penetration in there. Hardly any fill rod at all. I even managed to not mess up my tungsten that time. I'm so shaky that I usually end up with a uh, big old blob on the end of my tungsten and have to grind the tungsten again. But we didn't this time, so let's see how she goes this time. I feel like I need to turn my helmet down just a little bit more. A little too much heat, but for this it's fine. With TIG, you really shouldn't get it cherry red like that, but I wanted to make sure I had good penetration, and I do. Yep, we're good, very good, that's gonna work. So now our next step is going to be, I wanna determine the length on this, get this cut off, and then, um, well, we'll just show you a trick, or three or seven. Well, the simplest way to know how long to make your pump drive is to simply measure the distributor. We know that the distributor comes up to the block about 12 inches uh, from the drive to here, it's just a little over 12. And we know that the top of the distributor is at about 16 inches. So I think if we cut our shaft off between 16 and 17 inches, we should have plenty of room to get our drill motor on there. I might go 18 just to have a little extra, just in case. Uh, but another thing I want to mention too is on a lot of vehicles, if you have an old distributor you can gut, you can just pull the distributor drive shaft out and modify that to make your oil pump drive. I went over and found the one that I have for small block Mopar, and what I did was take a piece of steel rod just like this, that's a little warm, and uh, put a hex from an old Allen wrench or something, I don't remember what this was from, and just uh, trued it up on there and then welded it up and ground it down and I can stick this down in the block, spin it to pump oil on the oil pump on a small block when you have the distributor and also the oil pump drive gear out. And I've probably primed up 
I don't know. A lot of motors. I don't remember if this fits a big block, but I think it does also. Um, it's been so long, I don't remember the last one that we would have primed. Yes, we did. I'm 90% sure we used this on the big block in Joe's 69 Charger uh, when we primed the oil system because that was a brand new motor. Um, and it hadn't even been primed, if I remember right, from when it was rebuilt. Uh, so we had to prime that system up after it was in the car to make sure that we had good oil pressure on that before we fired it up. So again, we're going to go our 18 inches, and we got to remember we have a half inch sticking down. So we'll come up about uh, 17 and a half to 18. Let's go here. Okay, we got a nice mark there now. We should be able to cut that off. Here we go. Yeah, 17 and a half, which is fine. If we hold our distributor up against it, you can see that it's longer than our distributor, which means we have lots of room for our drill motor on the top. We will need to taper this edge. In fact, I'm going to do that right now because, again, it's cold. It's going burr. we got to get the burrs off. So the next step is we want to turn this down so that it will slide onto here. And the quickest way that I find to do this, and we're not looking to do any quality machine work here, is just to simply chuck this in the drill put our uh, grinder going and just turn it down. I'm going to stick that in my pocket so it doesn't go away. I need to unplug my welder. I suppose you could say that's a poor man's lathe. And I got a little carried away on that one. There we go. So I shouldn't have turned that one quite as much, but that's all right. That one's not as critical as this one anyway. So then the next thing we need to do is make sure that we have our uh, half inch depth in here correct so that we can weld that up. But there's something else more important we need to do before we weld this on there. So I took a couple minutes and just put a little bit of weld on that. Uh, other nut just to build it back up again and then turned it back down. I actually didn't have the camera on. I thought I did, but you can see that we've got this pretty good now. I don't want to weld this on here yet because I want to make sure that I get my pin through up here. And so this is going to be tricky because I have to weld, weld, drill it the right size and make sure that it's in the center. And I don't want a drill press, so unfortunately I can't uh, chuck it up and make it. I got to do it by hand. So that'll make it fun because, you know, we got to do it the fun way. We're doing everything by hand. So our next step, we need to get a roll pin that is this size. 136 thousandths ish. I'm trying to think what size that is. A little bigger than an eighth of an inch. An eighth is 125. And this is eh, about 143, 144. So... Um, a smaller roll pin will work. I don't know if I have any roll pins here, so we may have to make a road trip and uh, run to Tractor Supply and get a roll pin and a drill bit to go with it.
right, so here we are looking for roll pins somewhere in this vast pile of stuff. Here somewhere. Probably walk by them. They moved everything around in this store and I can't find anything here, so it's gonna take me a minute. Steel spacers. That's good to know because that's actually kind of what we're using, so if I screw this up, I can probably come back here and find one that'll work. Thumb screws, carriage bolts, nuts, pins and rings. There we go, pins and rings. Roll pins. We found roll pins. Now we just gotta find one that's the right size here and then make sure we have the correct drill bit to match. And I have my dial caliper with me so we can measure what we need to be sure 100% that it's the right size. I'll be back. So our options were um, an eighth, which is 125, or 156, which was um, 530 seconds, which is a little big, but I'm gonna go ahead and get them both, and I'll grab a couple more drill bits so that we have what we need. Uh, hopefully that should do the job. I don't think there's anything else we need for this project. I'm tempted to grab another sleeve while I'm here. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to, because if I misdrill that, we're screwed and I gotta drive back, and they're only a couple bucks. All right, so we got ourselves a fistful of drill bits and we got a couple different size roll pins. So I'm sure we're going to be able to make something work here um, on the way back to the car and we'll get back to the shop. And we'll be right back after a brief message from our sponsor. Car almost didn't start. We've got issues. Uh, one of the charging systems not putting out. I never bothered to hook up the volt gauge, so I don't know. Hopefully we get home. Gave me a scare there for a second. Probably need to throw this thing on the battery charger for a while. And test the alternator and just do stuff because I've been neglecting it again. Well, the first piece of good news is I just walked in the door and checked and the new sleeve that I bought for a spare is completely the wrong size, so that won't work. So we have to be sure that we don't screw this one up or, well, we'll have to figure something else out and this whole video will have been an epic fail, but let's just hope we don't fail. So I compared the 532nds pins to the distributor and they're much larger, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with the eighth inch which means that we're gonna drill our hole just a smit, smit smaller than eighth inch, which would be, I believe, 764 because we wanna press that in there a little bit and, well, just make it fit so it press fits. So we'll take our little tool or our little part off and we gotta get this lined up so it's perfectly in the center or all of this will have been a waste of time. So this will be the fun part, not think we're gonna go ahead and maybe put it right on our, our thing that we made for now and try to get it that way because like I said I don't have a drill press and 6,000 cars are gonna go by while I'm trying to talk on video so the good news is no matter where I start the hole it's going to be in the center because it's the one on the opposite side that's gonna make the difference oops but I got to be down a ways don't be doing that got to make sure we're in the right spot here the right insertion depth Okay, so about right there. Okay, sorry if I was out of frame there for a second, I'm back. So anyway, the first hole won't be the big deal, it's the second one that's gonna matter. Oop, oh, we slipped. There we go. Well, don't be dipped. All right, there we go. 
And the way we'll, well, the way we'll do this is just the way we do it. So you'll be able to tell how I do it by the way I do it. Let's get our first hole in. Okay, first one's through. Let's check our pin. We may need to, we may want to drill this up to eighth, but I don't think so, we'll see. I would rather start a little bit on the small side and then work our way up to bigger. So I'm gonna slide this back a little bit in my vise because the next part's the tricky part. It's getting that straight across. And again, without a drill press, this is gonna to be totally by eye. So I'm going to get myself all spread out here and eyeball that up both directions and pray like heck that I'm doing this right. Okay, my drill looks parallel to the front face. It looks like it's right down the middle. It's off just a little bit, so we'll shift it. And pray like heck we got it. The things a guy does Okay, let's pull it off right now and see how we did. It's this way a little bit. I don't think that's going to be a problem. We'll find out. Okay, I took the pin out. I don't know what I did with it. Dang it, I wished I would have done that a little bit straighter. I must, it must have walked on me. And that's okay. It'll be fine. Again, it's just for a tool. Well, you know what I did with the pin? But we have another one, the other one will show up. We will know if it's going to work or not when we get it in the car. That's why I want to do this before we weld it because if I have to, I want to re-drill this and I think I do because it's like, um, I can just spin this around, drill the other end. Okay, let me get a hammer and we'll tap that in. The beautiful thing is I got four shots at this or more because I can always just clock it around until I get it where I want it. I'm gonna try it this way without it being on the, on the uh, shaft tool thing. Uh, make sure my depth is right, looks good. I may drill one and drive the pin in and see if I can mark it that way we know the eighth inch is going to work uh, so we'll do that Oops. yep that's what happened is it walked i can see this one's doing the same thing and it's because it's not center punched There we go. I think that's better. Boy, that looks good. Still off just a little teeny bit. Definitely the pin is cocked, so that's good. There we go, perfect. I think we're gonna be golden this time. Well, look at that. I may try one more time. We have plenty of opportunities to move around. So we'll just take more attempts, it's fine. We'll go 90 degrees and see what that does. Okay, good. Yeah, it's 
off just a little teeny bit. But now you see why I didn't weld it on there first, because been here, done this, done this before. All right, let's drive our pin through. If you can see that. We'll try it. All right, let's see how straight we are now. I don't think we have any wobble on that or nothing to be too concerned about. It's tack welded on in a couple of spots. So uh, we gotta shear off our pin now so that we are able to push this down into the car and insert it into the oil pump and let's make sure it works before we finish welding it up. just a little bit long so that there's some insertion that gives us plenty of space i don't think it's going to be a problem so uh, if this works then we'll just have to go around and weld it all the way around push this down in here there's a spot that's got to go through there we go we're into the oil pump and it spins Now that we're going to um, do the final weld, I've turned my amperage up quite a bit and I'm using a heavier piece of fill rod uh, to accomplish this in a little bit quicker fashion. I also realized my ground wasn't hooked up well before, so it's going to take me a few minutes to find a good position here, but hopefully this is going to work. I was noticing that my uh, helmet was a little bit bright, I was seeing spots, so here we go. Well, maybe, maybe. Okay, we're just going to dress this up a little bit because I got a couple of bubbles in there.
And there we have it. MKS tool number 10057. Oakland engine oil pump priming tool. Like the TIG weld better than the MIG because it's much softer and easier to grind down. Uh, the only other thing we're going to have to do is I think if we lay it here and roll it, it may have a little bit of a whoop to it. No, it doesn't. It's pretty good. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. I'm looking down the road because any minute that Pontiac Solstice should be rolling in here for me to get started on that paintwork over the next couple weeks. Uh, a couple other little repairs, I guess, they want me to do. So uh, that'll be coming soon, so watch for that on the channel. A whole lot more coming in a lot of other areas. Um, yeah, just a lot of stuff. I appreciate y'all being here. Uh, if you haven't subbed to the channel, please do that. Hit the bell so you receive those notifications. The channel just continues to grow. I cannot thank y'all enough for how supportive you are of the channel. I appreciate it. Um, you give me great feedback. I, I love everything that you guys offer, and I hope that I give you something that is valuable in return. If you would, drop a comment down there about your experience with building oil pump priming tools or anything else that you like or want to see on the channel. We are on the other social media platforms. You know the one, the one about the face and the one about your grandma and all of that. Um, forward slash my car shop, check us out over there as well. And we can't end the show without doing one more thing. Rock!